All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, as we begin um, with this presentation. The, my name is Jesus Seja, and I am the Intervention Coordinator. And also joining me is Ms. Wen. Yes, I'm Vicky Wen. I am the School Social Worker. All right. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to um, just comment on the chat box, and we will have some time at the end of the presentation to answer those questions for you, okay? And then you can also at the end, turn on your mic and ask any questions that you have that way as well. Okay, so today's uh, presentation is really about uh, supporting your child uh, with this new journey that they're just starting um, now, that is high school and during all of this uh, you know, pandemic and odd times that we're living, it, it's really a finding ways for you to be able to support them and guide them uh, through their high school uh, you know, journey, and also help yourself at the same time, learn some tips on how you can help yourself so that then you can help them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pass it over to Ms. Wen, and she's gonna continue with the presentation. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Seha. So again, I wanna say thank you to all of you for joining us today. You know, I know we are all very busy, so thank you again for that. I mean, I can't imagine how many of you have turned into, you know, technicians and fixing the Wi-Fi or camp counselors doing arts and crafts with your kids. So again, we appreciate you taking the time out today and giving us your hour to kind of learn about how to help your kids through COVID. But, you know, the thing about this presentation is that we want to help not just your child, but also you. Now, because I'm sure you've heard the saying before, you know, to help someone else, you have to help yourself first. And that applies to everyone during these unprecedented times. You know, we tell our kids, we tell other students, and this is a crisis. You have never been through this before. So it is normal that you are frustrated with restrictions, disappointed with cancel events, sad to not see friends and so many other things. But you know, how many of you have actually said that to yourself, right? In all honesty, we have not been through this before. You know, we have not been through a pandemic and hopefully this is only like a once in a century or once ever type of thing. You know, it's normal that we are just as frustrated and disappointed and sad and everything else. You now, but I think what sometimes is hard is as the adult, we think about being the bigger person because of, you know, adulting. But again, this is a parent workshop and, you know, we are here to not just support our kids, but support each other as well to know that we are not alone. So let's talk about COVID you know, and let's slow down a little bit. And I want you guys to kind of do a self-reflection activity with me. You know, so get comfortable um, and really think. Now look back on these past few months and think about what it has meant for you, what it has meant for your child, what it has meant for your family. Now, I kind of want you to think about and reflect on how COVID has changed your life, changed our lives. Um, you know, things that were for the good and things that were not so good. So I'm gonna give you like a second or two to kind of just really brainstorm maybe one or two things in your life that you can come up with, all right? And with that said, let's bring it back, you know, and some things that maybe you guys have thought about is some positives like being able to sleep in, sleeping a little later than usual, um, not having to work or worry about um, road rage, you know, sitting in traffic, coming home with traffic, um, getting that time to finally read that book, uh, watching Netflix or playing with your kids or spending time, more time with your pets. You know, but we also think about all the not so good things that have happened, you know, like maybe annoyed with the constant like, mom, dad, I need help with this thing and that thing, you know, turning into teachers, right? Um, being worried that when you go outside to buy groceries or being an essential worker and being worried that maybe you're taking COVID home. You know? So these are the kind of the type of things that we think about and that we realize happened to us, right? And so there are a lot of pros and cons 
um, to COVID. Now, just kind of reflecting on that and reflecting on this activity, you know, how did it feel to acknowledge that this is happening to us? You know, maybe, I don't know about you, but maybe it's like a little weight has been lifted off of your chest because you recognize that there isn't really a lot of guilt for having thoughts like this because I'm not the only one. You know, and maybe a little bit of relief that I'm not the only one having these thoughts and feelings and experiences. Now, so we've done this reflection. We know we have these thoughts. We know we have these feelings. We know we have these experiences. So now what? So one of the things that I'm sure you've heard a lot about is self-care. And the reason that self-care is important is because it provides an avenue for you to let what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, it's an avenue to let it out. You know? So find a way to let everything out or even most of it, right? Converting your internal process to an external driving force. So things that can be suggested are have a personal ranting session, you know, whether it's with somebody else or with an imaginary person in a shower, just kind of being able to get it off your chest, off your heart, off your head and out into the world. Other suggestions are journaling, you know, exercising, painting, you know, and a lot of other um, suggestions. Now, the thing about self-care is that you are more than allowed to do this yourself. Your child is also more than allowed to do this themselves. And it's a process that we have on our own. And it's a space for us to kind of deal with whatever internal turmoil that we have so then we can go out and then we can engage with other people. And that actually brings on to my next point because I understand sometimes we don't have the space, we don't have the time to do self-care. And you're most likely not the only person in your family, right? So then there's also the concept of together care. You know, together care is what you can do with somebody else. You know, humans are social beings. We're not meant to be in isolation for too long. So it's important that we engage with other people, especially if you live with other people. Now, so things that are suggested like set a schedule. Uh, talk about when is work time. When is class time? So you guys aren't interrupting each other. Or setting a schedule by setting up a video call with friends. Create expectations. Loop in the family about each other's struggles. We don't know what each other are going through until we share. So it could be like, I don't know, there's not enough bandwidth for the internet because everybody is using video, but not everybody needs video or like my computer has overheated and I need a second set or something, I don't know. But letting each other know what our expectations. And they're kind of easy and fun things like having a board game night or a movie night, you know, um, set a challenge on Words with Friends or any other type of phone app that you found for games. And again, so many other things that you can do together with somebody else. Um, and the one thing, or well not only one thing, but kind of something that I want to emphasize a little more on that has to do with together care is this important aspect called facilitating conversations and asking questions. Now, the really great thing about this is that you can do this with somebody else and he can do this with your elementary student, your teenage student, your college student, or basically anybody. You know, you can talk to anybody and you can ask anybody questions. So, Research um, has shown that due to the pandemic, anxiety and depressive symptoms are on the rise, you know, making mental health just as important as a concern as physical health. And I think is, I personally believe that should always be the case, but it's just that this crisis has put it to the forefront of our minds. And this rise in anxious and depressive symptoms is due to the fact that people feel alone and helpless and hopeless. You know, kind of like thinking, when is this going to end? When can I go out again? You know, when can I go to school and hug friends? Am I ever going to feel safe? Right? And these feelings are normal in the time of crisis. But for our children, how are they supposed to know if no one tells them that? You know, if there isn't someone to model that for them or if they've never been through a crisis before? 
Now, as adults, we're in this kind of unique position where we have gone through different crises before. You know, nothing like COVID, of course, but we've gone through obstacles and we know that we're going to be okay in the end. But for our kids who don't have the life experiences, it's kind of hard for them to say like, I'll be okay, you know, this will pass over, things are gonna be all right. And so that's why we want to facilitate conversations and ask questions to make sure that we are on the same page. And these three following points on how to facilitate conversations, ask questions, are actually adapted from an article by Kaiser Permanente, and you're more than welcome to go to Kaiser and check it out yourself. So the first thing that um, is suggested is to take care, right? Since half of all chronic mental health conditions begin by 14 years old, it is incredibly pivotal that teenagers develop coping skills and resilience. And coping skills and resilience are skills that are necessary to function in everyday life. Right? We want to be able to guide them, guide our kids to have healthy outlets for emotions, which can come in the form of self-care or together care. But most importantly, you know, if we are going to talk the talk to take care, then we have to walk the walk, right? So model these healthy outlets for our kids. In times of crisis, you know, we look to our authority figures on how to act. So they're gonna be looking up to us more than ever. Second thing is talk often. Uh, you may not know what is going on in your child's head, heart, or, you know, body. So before you talk, make sure you give your child that uninterrupted time and facilitate a comfortable environment. You know, may it be one-on-one -on -one, or the dinner table, you know, maybe a ride as you're going around the neighborhood. You know, it's preferable to have a one-on-one -on -one talk, but it's understandable that with everybody in the house, you may not have the space, may not have the privacy, may not have the time to do one-on-one. -on -one. So it's kind of like what you can get. But Again, it's preferable to do a one-on-one. -on -one. And then when you do talk, it's okay to be direct. You know, it's okay to straight up ask, how are you feeling? You know, you look worried. You know, I've noticed that you're a little more tired than usual, right? But then again, don't pressure them into giving anything that they're not ready to give. The main point of talking often is to build trust with your child. And the best way to do that is to be genuine. You know, let them know that I'm here for you. You can come seek me out if you're comfortable with it. And if you want to seek me out to seek somebody else out, you know, that's okay. Letting them know that I just want you to get the help that you're looking for, the guidance that you want. And in a way, by being genuine with your kids, you're showing them that you respect them enough to be your own genuine self. Right, so things to look out for, um, to caveat a little bit in talking often, is like, when should I talk to my kid? Um, things to look out for in terms of changes in mood and changes of behavior um, are like, for example, if your child um, has been an early riser, but for some reason, he or she is getting up later in the afternoon, and you're not really sure why. So it's okay to you know, pull your kid aside and say, hey, I noticed this is happening. You're getting up a little later, what's going on? And then maybe you guys can figure out something to do with that. Or you know, maybe your child likes to play a lot of video games or on their computer, and they used to laugh a lot. And now it's kind of like just blank staring at a computer silence. It's okay to kind of poke at them a little bit and like, yo, I noticed that you're not as engaging as you were before, what's going on? I want to talk about it. All right, so these are kind of changes in moods and behaviors that as a parent you can watch out for and to bring up a conversation with your child. And the thing is, I'm actually going to bring in Mr. Sejas here at this point to talk about the academic signs that you can engage your child in. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Ms. Wen. With that being said, it, it, this is the time where um, you know, it's really important for you to have those conversations, facilitate those conversations uh, with your son or daughter uh, around their education as well, their academics, how they're doing. Uh, you know, we're typically um, caught up with a lot of work at times and it's difficult to have these conversations. Uh, but during this time, it is, it is vital for you to, you know, set aside some time and say, hey, let's talk about how things are going. How many live sessions do you have today? Who are your teachers? 
Um, are you struggling? And if so, um, let's look at some resources. Maybe you need some tutoring. Maybe um, we need to collaborate with your teacher. Maybe we need to set some time to um, just study prior to an exam that's coming up. Um, you know, oftentimes I, I hear from parents that, you know, their kids are on the computer, but they just they assume that they're working on their homework or their assignments. And then next thing you know, is like as soon as they turn around, there's a new screen. They're on a different website. Um, so, so it's sometimes difficult. So making sure that you're monitoring that and, and seeing what they're up to. What are they doing? Are they joining all of their live sessions? Are they completing all of their assignments? Um, and, and just uh, being there, being supportive for them. So having those conversations and, and like I mentioned, having some time throughout the day where you plan it and say, hey, this is going to be your study time and um, we're going to work on this together and I'm going to be here for you, um, you know, in order for them to to really be successful at our school, but also, um, you know, um, understanding maybe uh, some of those things that they are, are early signs that they might need extra support, right? So uh, being there, talking to them, facilitating those conversations, but also looking for those early signs of maybe they just need a little bit more extra help uh, and, and where can they get that help? And we're gonna be discussing that um, in the next few slides. Um, so I'll pass it back to Ms. Wen. So she can continue. Thank you. Hi, thank you. And that actually brings me right into my next point. So our third point is acting early. Mm -hmm. Right. So once we recognize these things, then what do we do? And just for a little bit of information, um, evidence has shown six years old is actually the onset for anxiety. Um, Eleven years old is typically the onset for behavior disorders, and thirteen year old is typically the onset for mood disorder. So. You know, we want to act early because prevention is always a better route than reaction, you know, because then at that point we can stop behaviors and symptoms from developing or increasing in severity. And the thing is, there's no shame in seeking help. There's also no shame in seeking specialized help. So if you feel like you're struggling with taking care, you're struggling with talking often, or whatever has come up is a little too big for you to handle, it's okay to seek help outside of the family. Um, kind of like if your child has a paper cut, you know, or um, has a small burn from a baking pan, you know, you would say like, hey, I can handle this. Here's uh, some of sporin, here's running water, here's a Band-Aid, right? But if your child has a bigger problem, like a broken wrist or a concussion, you would not keep your child at home and be like, okay, I can do this, you know, unless, of course, they're a medical professional, but typically we're not medical professionals. We would go to urgent care. We would go to um, the emergency room, right? So same thing with our mental health is if it gets too big, um, seek specialized care. And if you don't know where to get that, you can talk to your child's counselor or you can speak to me for resources. And for kind of this presentation right now, I'm going to go through a couple of options that you yourself can seek for professional care. Okay, so the first one is EAP. This is called the Employee Assistance Program. So this is actually a program through your own insurance um, from your employer. And the thing is EAP is a resource that can address a variety of things. They can address mental health therapy, financial assistance, parenting skills, etc. But I can't speak that every single EAP has all of those things. It depends on your employer and the type of insurance that you have. So I would recommend if you're looking into EAP is to contact your HR department. Or if your insurance is through your spouse or partner, contact your spouse's or partner's HR department. And they would be able to direct you to whatever EAP services that they have. Right, the next thing is mindfulness. Um, mindfulness is an intervention where you bring awareness to your current state to bring acceptance, acceptance to your thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations. So this is kind of like a broader range of that really short exercise that we did earlier with self-reflection. So the thing about mindfulness is that there's a lot of resources out there, professional resources for you to take advantage of. So Breather is actually a phone app where you can download and you can practice deep breathing, mental body scans, meditation, et cetera. Um, and if you're not into the phone apps and you don't wanna download anything, UCLA Health actually has guided meditation. So there are audio clips for you to play. 
And these are just two things out there. There are so many other options for you. Um, maybe you yourself are using one of them or know of one, and you're more than welcome to kind of play around to see what works best for you. The next thing we have is 201. This is actually a local directory for life resources, and it's free. It's confidential, and you can ask a variety of things. So it's not just limited to mental health resources, but if you're asking about employment or housing or anything else like that, you are able to call them as well. And the last bit is something that I'm sure you're all aware of is insurance. Um, your own insurance plan should be able to let you know about mental health agencies that are within your network. Now, if you're in Kaiser, they actually have a dedicated team of psychiatrists, psych, uh, psychiatric social workers under the same roof. Sometimes you might have to travel to somewhere else if the local Kaiser doesn't have any place but they do have a mental health um, department. And other insurance, again, like Medi-Cal and Blue Shield, you do have to call their um, customer service line and see what are local resources that you can take advantage of. And last but not least, um, these are resources for emergencies, you know, because sometimes you're not gonna be able to kind of sit at home and call certain places. Kind of, again, if your child has a broken wrist, you're not gonna, sit at home and call your doctor and wait for the next available appointment, right? You want it quick and fast. So kind of things that are self-explanatory and not, um, like 911, 911 is completely self-explanatory. Access is a crisis line specifically for those residing in LA County. So what Access does is that they um, assess on the phone with you and your child for a risk of harm, whether that's self-harm or suicide ideations or whatnot. And once they do that assessment, they contact appropriate resources. And those appropriate resources could be um, a hospitalization, it could be a link to um, a mental health agency for you know, an intake, um, therapy, whatever it is, ACCESS does that assessment. Then there's also the National Suicide Hotline. Um, it's a number that you can give to your child um, to appear, it's basically for anybody. And the last one we have um, is the California Youth Crisis Line, which is specifically for 12 to 24 year olds. And it's for all type of crisis. So this is something you do give to your child. Um, these crises that they address does not have to be mental health. They do address things like um, housing um, or employment. And basically it's a, it's a youth line. And the last part of my portion for additional resources and in terms of mental health is that I'm aware that in order for us to be mentally and emotionally stable, you know, our environment needs to be stable as well. And so things that do influence us and influence our mental health is our finances, you know, our food, our housing, having a roof over our head, electricity, internet, whatnot. And these are all different um, resources that are available online. So all you do is pull up Google and type in, type in all these um, departments. And they would be able to walk you through um, whether it's unemployment, whether it's disability, paid family leave, for example, if you get COVID, or if you're taking care of somebody who has COVID, um, EDD has uh, answers for the questions on how to sign up for certain things. Now, if you run a business, how do I get a loan? Um, I know with EVPs, uh, not EVPs, EVTs, uh, last I checked, there was um, an option for you to go online and order your groceries instead of going in person for that. But again, um, I recommend just checking that out a little bit, seeing how you qualify, qualify and if you qualify. And last but not least, there's the the housing option so there's the rent freezes there's um my understanding that there might be a program for reduced um, fees or like additional services for those in the water electricity and gas company um, i do know that um, some service carriers like t-mobile um, i believe it was t-mobile offers something about like extra data for this time i'm not sure if that promotion is over but I recommend if you do have T-Mobile or even Verizon, um, just to check in with them. It doesn't hurt to ask and see if there is anything that you can sign up for. All right, and with that said, I'm actually gonna transfer over to Mr. Seha. He's gonna give you additional resources in regards to what Granada can provide for you and your family. Oh, and you're on, you're on mute. 
Thank you, Ms. Wen. So yeah, in addition to all of the outside resources that Ms. Wen shared with you, I want to talk to all of you about some of the in-house uh, resources that we offer at Granada. Academically, we have a math and writing center that is available to all students. And this typically is a uh, program that supports students after school. Uh, we, when we were in session um, at school, we had separate classrooms where students would stop by after school and get help with their math homework or with their essays, writing their essays or getting some reviews. Um, now all of that has shifted to online. So we still have those labs and students can submit essays for review. They can go ahead and, and get help from some of their uh, peer mentors that are also academic mentors of a program that we have on campus. So these students are 11th and 12th grade students. They're academic mentors. Uh, they've been recommended by teachers. They go through a whole application and interview process. And um, these students are just there to help out after school. In both classrooms, you have a English and math teacher who is there to support and guide all the sessions. Uh, we also have outside of Granada is a tutor.com program. It's another platform and it's a free resource to all of the students. And um, students for this uh, semester coming up during the fall, they're, they're all gonna get 900 minutes of free live tutoring. These sessions are uh, um, available 24 seven to them. And um, as you can see there, Ms. Wen is scrolling down. Last semester we had uh, 600 minutes for the students. And now for the fall, uh, we're planning to add an additional 300. So we'll be uh, you know, allotting 900 minutes per uh, student. And if students happen to run out of time, they can just go ahead and follow up with me. They can email me and we can see um, if we can add more additional minutes. This is, like I said, a free resource. And um, the website for it, I'm going to just type it up on the um, chat box so that you can all take a look at it right now. It's uh, www.tutor.com forward slash GHCHS. So if you all want to go ahead and click on that link, you'll be able to just quickly see what the website looks like. What I always remind students is to make sure that the link um, when they go to that website it has our school logo our granada hills charter school logo because sometimes if they just type in you know tutor.com it'll send them to a separate website and they won't be able to log in so they just want to make sure that it has a forward slash ghchs and once they are on that website um, just identify the logo from our school and the way that they'll be able to log in is using their ghc email address and then their uh current Chromebook password. Okay, so this is another resource that we have for them um, on top of the, the math and writing centers. In addition to that, we also have a um, after hours activities program. It's called our AHA program. And that program is also available to every student. We have free tutoring. We have uh, instructional aids that are there also to support students right now virtually. And um, we also, that, that program also offers um, enrichment classes and like driver's ed, we have a soccer club, we have painting, drawing, and we're looking into different, uh, incorporating different enrichment classes for the fall semester that um, students can do virtually as well. Uh, as you can see through there, you can see we have like Yoga Wednesdays, Game Development, Driver's Ed. Those are some of our uh, current um, classes that we have, that we offer as far as enrichment through our AHA program. Um, and like I mentioned, tutors and instructional aids are available as well. This is, some, this is a program that it's housed within Granada uh, as opposed to uh, tutor.com where they have to go to a separate website. Uh, sometimes students prefer to use tutor.com because tutor.com is available 24 seven. They can get help from a tutor on the weekends or late at night versus AHA, right? Um, but this is something that it's, it's there for them as well. So um, make sure that you take some time with uh, your son or daughter to review this through our school website. And um, if Ms. Wen, can you just uh, go to the our school website and then hover under counseling? Um, and then we can take a look at where it says uh, need extra help. If you can click on that link right there, please. So. If you go to counseling and then you go where it says need extra help, 
We also have a, a Google Classroom Guardian where you can go ahead and register to monitor your students' progress, right? You can see how they're doing. You'll get emails from their teachers uh, that will explain to you uh, how they're doing, how, how's their progress going. So I highly encourage you to check this out, overall this website out, but specifically if you go to um, need extra help under counseling, under that counseling tab, you'll be able to access this and register. Um, and that's just another way, in addition to Home Access Center, where you'll be getting like uh, daily, weekly uh, summaries from the teachers on how they're doing, All right? So, and then if you scroll down, you'll see information there of our 24-7 uh, online tutor.com program, um, as well as the, the link is there, and, and you can access that, and then our AHA tutoring program, right? Um, there's uh, access to that as well there. So uh, we do recommend that you fill out a referral if you want to enroll your, pro, uh, your student in this program. Uh, you want to make sure that you complete one of those referrals so that we have them um, in our list and we know how many students are enrolled and we can send out information to them later on with uh, different um, activities or enrichment classes that are coming up. So um, that's it. I mean, as far as the website, you can also go to intervention. Um, Ms. Wen, do you mind going to counseling and then scrolling to, yeah, we can click on intervention. So under intervention, you will find also my contact information. So if you have any questions about tutor.com, about how um, you can register for the Google Guardian summaries, uh, any questions about our uh, programs as far as our AMP program or our link group program, um, you can also reach out to me. Uh, we do have a link group program. That program is also um, it's geared mainly for our ninth graders, incoming ninth graders. Uh, the way that it works is that we have an 11th or 12th grade student that serves as a mentor throughout their first year, their freshman year. They're there for them. They're supporting them along the way, checking in on them. And every student, uh, every student that is a ninth grader is assigned a leader, a link crew leader who will be there with them through that year for support. Uh, they actually already, we had a few activities uh, during STA where they were able to jump in and, and talk to the students. We had a welcome day, so all the students uh, received that the first kind of check-in to um, you know just let them know, hey, we're here. We know these are odd times, and we wanna make sure that we are still here to support you and guide you along the way. And, and you know what better way than somebody that has already um, you know, been a ninth grader, 10th grader, and 11th grader in, in some of the cases. Uh, these students are also, they have to go through an application process and interview process, and um, they're trained to, to be a mentor in that way. So, um, you know, this is something exciting for the students. A lot of them have been really engaged in, in getting to know them and asking them questions of like, well, how's, how is uh, Granada? And like, where can I access this? And, and so forth. And how does Google Classroom work and whatnot. So, um, you know, their link crew leaders are there for them to support them and mentor them in that sense. And then we have our AMP mentors. Those are really focused more on, on just academics. So they are there, they're assigned to specific classrooms. Uh, some of them are Algebra One or Geometry or English class or a Biology class. And they are there uh, linked with the teacher to support the students. Right, these are students that have been recommended by teachers and they are strong in that subject. And, um, you know, students like that as well. Sometimes they feel maybe intimidated or shy to ask questions to the teachers. And by having an academic mentor, uh, which is another student in the classroom, they feel a lot more comfortable to ask those questions and, um, you know, just ask for help if they need it. So some of those students are in their classrooms and they will, they will be part of their classrooms for those subjects. Others will be in the labs after school for the math right, the math center and the writing center. Um, so yeah, you can see my information is right there as well. And um, that's the kind of support that we have as far as academics go. We also um, encourage you to just peruse through the website. There's a lot of information there from, you know, just academics, counseling, activities, athletics, about us. Uh, there's a lot of information there, so I encourage you to take some time and, and go through it with uh, your son or daughter to um, just learn a lot more about what we offer and, um, you know, encourage them to sign up for something. 
Uh, we do have a lot of activities. We have um, over 80 different clubs and organizations. We also have uh, over 25 athletic uh, sport teams. So we encourage you to um, go through them. Students last Friday uh, that were part of STA, so all incoming graded uh, students had um, an opportunity to get to know some of these uh, members from these clubs. They were able to join about three live sessions. And through those sessions, they were able to find out more about what the clubs are, who the presidents are, and they even had an opportunity to sign up already for some of these clubs or organizations. So uh, if you have questions regarding this or if you, if your son or daughter um, you know, was interested in a specific maybe club, but they weren't able to get a hold of them, we recommend you uh, to go through this website um, under clubs and um, just search, you can see there who the, the, the president is or the sponsor is of that club, and you can reach out to them that way. Uh, you can also email the activities office and they can provide you more information on the specific club that you're interested in. Um, but all incoming ninth graders had an opportunity last Friday to, to get to know a lot of these clubs and sign up for some of them. And overall, uh, you know, it, it is uh, our research has and the data has uh, overall like proven that those students that are more engaged and are more involved in activities and extracurricular activities within our school are um, a lot more successful at Granada. So really encourage them to get involved in something, um, whether it's a club, a sport, or just uh, even if it's an enrichment class through our AHA program. Um, with that being said, we also have a, a virtual peer-to-peer -peer support group. And this is also ran with some of our uh, student leaders that are part of AMP and Link Crew, and this this uh, group is is more of a social emotional support group. So this is where students can just jump into that Google Classroom. I manage that Google Classroom, and um, I've selected uh, students that I feel are good candidates to support others, and who have also received training on confidentiality and how to really support and and share resources if needed. Um, and those students will post different like uh, motivational videos, quotes, and, and will really be there to support other students that might feel alone or might want to talk to somebody. So uh, this is a new uh, group that we have, and uh, we encourage every student uh, to go ahead and join that Google Classroom. Uh, so if you are interested in that, uh, please reach out to me or um, you can go on the website and we're gonna have information as far as like the, the Google class code for you to join if you're interested in that type of also support. And um, these, like I said, these are student leaders, 11th and 12th grade students that are there to really support one another during this pandemic and, and you know, these difficult times. Um, in addition to all of that, we also, as far as food goes, we are going to continue with the grab and lunch. Uh, this is free combined breakfast and lunch. During the fall semester, it's going to be only for our uh, GHC students, uh, but we will continue with that program, okay? And um, I do see a lot of uh, questions that are starting to come up here, so we can maybe start answering some of these. Uh, but as far as the all the additional resources that GHC offers, they're here, um, and make sure that you kind of go through them and, and understand them, and if you have any questions, just reach out or you, know, you can type them up right now. Um, you can either type them up or you can unmute yourself as well. 